I had some of this galvanized 33.7 millimeter pipe, which I pulled out of a skip at my old place of work several years ago, and I've been storing it all that time. I also had some of these key clamp fixings, and in this video I'm going to be using these to make some frames for an outdoor table and benches. I've never worked with this galvanized pipe before, so I'm going to be keeping the design really basic, and it's just a garden table, so we're not too bothered about how it looks, but what is important to us is that it lasts for many years, that it's weatherproof, and that it's strong and robust. After taking all the bits apart and figuring out if I had enough for what I wanted to build, I started measuring and marking so that I can cut the pipe to length and I'm using a cutting disc in the angle grinder for that. I just needed to come at it from both sides in order to cut all the way through. And these cuts don't need to be perfectly clean. They don't even need to be perfectly accurate either as the fixings that I'll be using are pretty forgiving and will hide the ends of the pipe. I didn't have quite enough of the fixings to build what I wanted so I ordered some extra bits and I'll talk more about where is best to buy this stuff and also the costs of building a table and benches like this in detail later in the video. These fixings simply push on the end of the pipe and get secured with these allen key or hex key grub screws. One thing to note here is that I found a 6mm allen key to be slightly too small, so you'll need an imperial sized quarter inch key which is around 6.35mm to tighten these effectively. And from there I can keep adding pipe where I need it in the same way. Occasionally I found an old rivet that I needed to grind away in order to make room for the fixings to slide onto the ends. This component is called a short T and I can use that to add a length of pipe in between the two legs. I'm going to need another short T in the middle of that piece and then a third short T to hold the other end. And then I can make sure the middle one is centered. I did the same on the opposite end and then I can add a length of pipe down the middle. This design makes for a really solid table frame that only took about 10 to 15 minutes to assemble. It was really easy. I've never played with Meccano toys or anything like that but I should imagine it's not too dissimilar to this. I also had some of these base plate fittings and I figured I may as well use these as feet to give the frames more stability on the ground. Then I can flip the whole thing over and I just want to check that everything is sitting square using my framing square. Again, it doesn't need to be perfect. As long as it's square by eye, I'm happy. So I'm just looking at this now and because the table's quite long, I think it would have been a good idea just to have another cross section here. But unfortunately, I don't have enough of the right fittings to do that. So I'm just going to go with it. These pipes and fittings tend to be oily and greasy, even the new ones that I bought, so I'm going to wipe them all down thoroughly with some white spirit to clean it all up, as I'm going to be painting these frames later on, so it needs to be nice and clean. For the tabletop, I'm going to be using pressure-treated, smooth-faced decking boards. I managed to find some 5.4 meter lengths, which are 120 millimeters wide and 28 millimeters thick for just 10 pounds a length at my local reclamation yard and I took my circular saw with me so that I could cut them down to lengths that I could fit inside my van. I spent some time choosing which faces of the board I wanted facing up and down, trying to hide any nasty knots or imperfections on the underside. I had plenty of bits of pressure treated 3x2s left over from a previous project, so I'm going to use these to brace the underside of the tops. I also already had some 65mm decking screws, which look like they'll be a good length for securing them to the underside of the decking boards. Here I'm spacing apart the boards to the size I want the width of the tabletop to be. And then I can place my braces where I want them and I drill pilot holes to make sure the wood doesn't split and temporarily screw them on at each end making sure that they're square using my speed square. The overhang here is just going to allow these braces to fit in between the pipes on the table frame. Then I can get the spacings between each board looking consistent just by eye. These gaps will allow rainwater to pass through the tabletop. Here I'm drawing lines around where the boards are and then I can add some exterior polyurethane glue. All of the tools and consumables that I use can be found in the My Tools link in the description box below by the way. Then I reposition it again, drill pilot holes and add two screws into each board. I'm using my body weight just to force the brace down onto the boards to get tight joints. And now I can take this to the table frame and see how it fits. Looks pretty good. 
Then I just unscrewed the boards at the end so that I can glue those in place too before adding the screws again. Here I'm measuring the overhang at each end because these boards were cut slightly oversized and I make some marks to square up the top to the table frame. And I can use the track saw to trim the end square and get the tabletop to its final length. Here's where I noticed a problem. The boards that sit on the corner fittings sit higher than those that are resting on the pipe. You can see here there's about a 6mm gap on the boards that sit on top of those corner fittings and I'm going to need to do something about that later so I'll come back to this. I used a small roundover bit in my router to just get rid of any sharp corners on the timber and I had just enough space to get the router bit in between the boards too. I did a bit of sanding just to the end grain at 80 grit followed by 120 grit. This is going to help seal up the fibres of the wood so that they absorb less moisture. And then I added a few coats of clear wood preserver to the end grain of the boards which is going to help protect the wood from rot and insect damage. As this is pressure treated wood I don't really need to worry about applying it to the rest of the boards. Again you can find this product in the My Tools link. Next it was on to making the benches and the construction of these was exactly the same design just smaller. Although you'll see that I ended up adding another brace in the centre here just for a bit of extra support. For the sake of about £18 I figured it was worth getting some extra fittings so that I could add this. And for these I made some tops using three of the decking boards. And then I can get these moved around to the back of the house where they're going to live. Now for some finishing touches. Some of the boards had some bad looking knots and I'm going to fill these with some pound shop epoxy which I hope will keep the water out. And once it's fully cured I just sand away the excess. And here I'm adding a centre brace to the middle of the table frame as well, just to stop the wooden tops from flexing. So back to the issue I mentioned earlier of these boards sitting on the metal fixings in the corners. And I've decided I'm not too worried about it in this direction, as in the length of the tabletop, but I am worried about it across the width of the tabletop because I think it's just going to force the boards out of alignment with one another. I've been giving it some thought and I really want to be able to shim up these four boards in the centre to be in alignment with those two. But I'd rather not attach those shims to the bottom of the timber, I'd prefer to fix them to the metal frame itself. So here's what I've come up with. First I'm going to make marks in between each board and then I'm going to drill pilot holes in between each of these marks using a 2.5mm drill bit. I then widen that hole slightly with a 3.5mm bit and then add a couple of penny washers and drive in just an ordinary wood screw which is going to self tap itself into the steel as I drive it in. These screws and washers aren't meant for exterior use but I'm not worried about them seeing as I'm going to be painting everything anyway which will protect them. My solution for the benches was the same but on those I just need to support one board in the centre. I bought some of this Hammerite black paint designed especially for galvanised metal and I'm going to apply that to the metal frame just to make it look a bit less industrial. I used a brush to paint any awkward bits but did most of it with a roller which was much quicker. So I've just got a second coat of paint on the bench and table frames behind me and I'm hoping it's not going to rain. So onto the costings. Obviously I had a lot of this stuff already because most of it was salvaged or stuff that I already had. So in total it cost me about £40 for the decking boards and about £60 for the key clamp fixings that I needed to buy. So the total cost to me was about £100. But to give you a rough idea of the costs for it if you were to buy the galvanised pipe and all of the fittings new, the cost is going to vary a lot depending on on where you buy it from. I found that the cheapest place to buy the fittings was on eBay where you can expect to pay between three and four pounds for each fitting and for each table or bench if you build them in the same design as I used you'd need eight short tees, four 90 degree elbows and four of the base feet things. So the total for all of the fittings would be around 50 pounds. So if you want a table and two benches that's 150 pounds just for the fittings and that's excluding postage.
Definitely do shop around though as postage costs can make a big difference. For the 33.7mm galvanised pipe the price varies depending on the thickness of the walls of the pipe. The stuff I had to use was really thick heavy duty stuff measuring about 3.2mm thick. You can save money by getting the thinner stuff which will still be more than strong enough for this application. Buying it online might not always be the best option though because shipping long things is expensive. But again shop around locally at whatever builders merchants you have around you and you should be able to find it for about four to five pounds per meter. Again could be more could be less depending on where you buy it. For the table and benches of a similar size to the ones that I made you'd be looking at around £65 for the pipe, less for the benches, maybe around £55 at a guess. So for a table and two benches the total would be about £175 for the galvanised pipe. So add it all up and for two benches and a table you're looking at maybe £325 for the metal frames and maybe another £60 for enough pressure treated decking boards to make the tops based on average prices. And on top of that you might have postage fees, screws, timber preserver, paint. It really depends on how you decide to build them but let's say £400 to £450 is a really approximate ballpark figure. I actually don't think that's too bad considering this is a table that should pretty much last forever with a bit of maintenance. Maybe I might need to make a new top for it in 20 years or so if it starts to rot. Who knows, but the frame is very strong, very stable and it shouldn't rust as the metal is galvanised and also now painted too. Oh my god. What the hell is that? the mother of all hornets. <laughs> My table and benches are quite long at 1.8 meters so if you made them shorter you could save a bit of money there too especially because you could probably do away with that upper part of the frame and the center support and just mount the pipe directly to the underside of the tabletop using some of the wall flange type fittings. I think that's something that I've seen other people do before but as my table was so long I think that extra rigidity for the top of the frame is necessary. But this is something you can experiment with. The amount of different fixings available is amazing really and you can get much more creative with it but for us the objective was just to make something long lasting and in terms of design we just kept it simple. It's a garden table and appearance isn't so important to us as it would be if it were a piece of furniture in the house. Please subscribe to my channel for more weekly woodworking videos. If you'd like to help support the channel you can do that on YouTube channel membership or my Patreon page. Links to both are in the description box below where you can get early access to my content, exclusive videos including this one that I've just uploaded and a name credit at the end of my videos. Thank you for watching.